Hey guys, welcome back to Cooking Unscripted. In today's episode, I wanted some pulled pork. For those of you who don't know, I don't live in a house, I live in an apartment. We don't have a smoker. So what's the next best thing? We do an oven roasted barbecue pork and then we'll pull it, we'll make a sandwich out of it, top it with some coleslaw and eat it, cause why not? It's pretty simple, we're gonna make our own rub. We got the ingredients here. Again, make sure you're, what, what are you laughing about? Got Beavis and Butthead over here. She said, Rob. <laughs> Grease is cool. We're just gonna cook off some pork, pull it. So the first thing in rubbing your meat is to make the actual rub. You got some brown sugar. You use a mixture of Chinese hot mustard and regular English dry mustard. But I like the little heat of Chinese mustard that dry mustard doesn't have. So we'll use half and half. You good, stuff? A little Mexican weed. Some smoked paprika. Make sure it's smoked because again, we don't have a smoker. So some chili powder. Some garlic powder. That was a good guess because I had no, if I didn't, I didn't know if I grabbed onion or garlic. Some garlic powder. And some onion powder. Give it all a nice mix. If you give it a smell, it should smell like barbecue, which it does. It smells like what? A good rub? Yeah, and we're just gonna rub it out. I can do this all day. The jokes, not the rubbing. <laughs> <laughs> My wife just got the rubbing. The joke, not an actual rub. Our pork butt, with all barbecue, you need some sort of binder. And what a binder acts, uh, acts as is holding the spices to the actual meat. Binders typically have no flavor. A lot of people will use mustard. In my case, I like to use hot sauce. And we're using tapatio, which gives it a little bit of flavor, but not a tremendous amount of flavor. You don't have that spice. But I don't, I've never been a big fan of using mustard as a binder. Coat our meat in tapatio. Make sure you get in there, get everything covered. here and begin to get this again covered and then this will go into the oven we'll just roast this we're gonna do a couple of other things first but let this sit for at least a couple hours usually 24 hours is best so a little bit of onion onion got our hot pan our oil I love Sam Adams it's a little bigger than when I lived in Boston but there's actually another really good beer in Boston called Harpoon which is by far my favorite. So we're gonna put our onions in. You want that si sizzle? No. Oh. So we're just gonna saute our onions for a bit. So we've par cooked our onions. We are going to sear off our beautiful pork butt. Would you like some brown sugar? We've seared off the pork belly. We're gonna add a beer. You, if you don't drink beer, you can always add Dr. Pepper, Coca-Cola, any of that stuff is fine too. I drink beer. We are going to cover this and put this into a 300 degree oven cook it to an internal temperature of at least 190 degrees, but not to exceed 200 degrees. Should take two and a half hours, depending on your oven. And if you're gonna smoke it, which you can use this recipe to smoke, then I will, it's the same. 190 degrees, 195 degrees, depending on what you cook your smoke, what you set your smoker at. 250 degrees or 350 degrees will depend on how long it will take. But we wanna be able to pull it. That's the point behind it is we'll have the sauce in it. We'll be able to toss everything in there and then let it go. We will let this go in the oven. And then when it's done, we have our, our pork. So you still want it to be hot because we wanna be able to yank it, pull it. It was like the fat, the gooiness, the beautifulness. Get in there, get your hands dirty, pull your meat, play with it. It's always better when you play with it. Right, babe? Can we put some like 70s music in there? You know, like the 70s porn music. But it's nice and easy to pull apart. And then 
if you really wanted to, if you have a KitchenAid mixer with a paddle attachment, you could actually throw it in there and just do it that way. But there's something to be said about pulling your pork by hand rather than using a machine. Look at that though. Like this beauty right here, this beauty. That's what we want to be able to do is just pull it apart, pull your meat, get it all nice in there, rip it apart. Not too hard though, that fat. Mm. Wonderful, beautiful. So we're gonna take our meat and stick it back into our sauce. We got some pulled pork love in there. Look at that shit. We got that done. We're gonna leave that a little warm. In the meantime, we got our coleslaw, our homemade mayonnaise. Give it a little tap. All it is, it's just mayonnaise, salt and pepper. It's just garlic. We're gonna add a little bit of white, pe white vinegar, pepper, and salt. And then we are going to toss, toss my salad, I don't care. Pork's done. So a little bit of butter. So we're toasting the brioche buns. We want to get a kind of a crisp on it. Sweet baby race. Bah, bah, bah. Sometimes never tastes so good. So good. So good. This is gonna be messy. Wow, Jesus Christ. Get up. So we got some pork, some more pork. So we're using some Sweet Baby Ray's because I was lazy and feel like making barbecue sauce. A little coleslaw over the top, a little brioche bun, Bing. maybe a little more. Baby God sauce. Bam, full pork sandwich. For those of you that don't live in a house with a smoker, it's easily done in an oven. A couple, three hours, you're done. It's just as good. Maybe not just as good. You don't get the smoke ring or what have you, but it's an easy way to do a pulled pork sandwich in your house, still have that barbecue flavor, and we're about to eat it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my wife. So if you're looking for a quick, easy barbecue pulled, barbecue pulled pork recipe, barbecue pulled pork recipe, then this is one for you. Please like, subscribe, notify, ring my bell, and I will see you guys next time.